Exciting to be here to talk with you a bit about um, subject specialists, li liaison librarians, and um, I'm going to talk. You're going to hear some similar themes uh, within my talk as with Kurt's, uh, but slightly different focus. Um, and I'm going to talk about how we can manage globally to enable this um, ability for liaison librarians to act locally within their research communities. And you'll find that I talk um, about research and teaching and the whole environment kind of all intermixed because that's how it works uh, for my staff. OK, so I'm going to frame this discussion. I'm, and I'm going to refer to my colleague David Shoemaker and um, Mary Talley's report on models of embedded librarianship, where they found f some success differentiators between successful uh, liaison programs, embedded programs, versus ones that weren't so successful. And, and there are these four points. And I'm particularly going to focus on the management support aspect of that work. And uh, to get started, because it's important to the context of what we're doing at MIT, um, a little bit of context about it. Uh, the size, um, it's a medium. Uh, some of you might think it's small <laughs> research university that's um, more graduate students than undergraduates. Uh, about 70% of the students are in science and engineering, which defines a, cur a particular kind of curriculum that's very problem set focused and team learning based. Uh, the department structure within MIT is highly, highly decentralized. Um, it's kind of a loosely federated group of uh, departments into a uh, whole MIT. But what unites them is a strong uh, common value system, which I'll talk about a little bit later. The libraries within MIT, there's about 185 staff, which is about 15% um, smaller than it used to be a few years ago. And we have about 14 uh, full-time equivalent uh, staff focused on liaison services, uh, which actually adds up to about 27 people. We have a very matrixed environment where people have um, multiple reporting lines. We are not tenure track, and our budget, you can see there, it's give or take a million or two. I don't know, 20 million. <laughs> Uh, two years ago, the MIT libraries went through a reorganization in response to these very um, large uh, trends in the in our business, essentially. We used to be organized by siloed physical locations. And the liaison librarians, we thought of them more as subject librarians. And um, they were arranged by these physical locations. And that, that really did set up some bound... Um, barriers, I would say, uh, about collaboration and rethinking roles. So, and I would say that the the librarians were raised in this kind of lone wolf model where you get hired, you get some t training on kind of common systems and processes around collections and other things. It was very collection focused. And then you're kind of set off to interact with your communities um, however you want. There was not a whole lot of guidance. Um, that's the environment I was hired into at MIT 12 years ago. Now, though, um, we have brought all the liaison librarians into a single organization, and I would call us a loosely federated group of uh, liaison librarians, similar to our department structure uh, at MIT. And um, we are expecting, we expect them to work together, learn from each other, while working more closely with their communities. I think we've changed the emphasis from a very reactive service model to a proactive outreach-based relationship building model. And I think what we find is that we have to, as Scott says, we have to help provide the liaisons new stories to tell. We um, have hired one new liaison since we reorganized, so we have a staff that's been in place for a long time. And they were all hired under the old lone wolf model. So you can imagine there's some change dynamics that are happening over time to enable liaisons to embrace this, um, this new reality. I would say that people were generally very enthusiastic, but not always sure about how to make that change. So part of what we're doing is um, supporting that change. So some of what we're trying to do is enable liaisons to focus on their disciplinary communities um, and their particular needs. So like, I don't, probably don't need to tell you the kinds of differences in researchers between math on one hand and computer science on the other. They're related, but often their needs are very different. Or um, aeronautics and astronautics, engineering versus economics, needs are very different. Approaches are different. And therefore, they have different kinds of um, questions and needs of library services. 
or between chemistry and comparative media studies. Both require quite highly involved uh, librarians with their communities, but in different ways. So we want to enable liaisons to customize their services to those environments, yet um, uh, still be supported in that. So even though the researchers have a lot of unique needs um, to be responded to by liaison librarians, they also have a lot of common needs. So they pretty much universally need easy access, fast access to information sources. They are universally dealing with information overload and lack of time to deal with what's in front of them. They do have some common values. Um, they're one of the first sets of faculty to unanimously vote, vote in an open access policy because they have a common value of global reach of their work and um, enabling people to use the, the research that uh, happens at MIT. And they also very commonly um, have a very multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary focus. They believe that innovation is going to happen at the margins between disciplines, and they structure themselves to take advantage of that. So they have things in common as well. So some of the universal structures we're trying to put in place to support our liaison librarians um, is what I'm going to share with you next. So the very first thing we did when we reorganized two years ago and came together in a single department, we wanted to get a sense for what is in common across all of our liaison programs. And we created a two-page document that um, that kind of outlined that, where all the characteristics were true for everybody who was in the room. and um, But you could see how they could be individually customized and um, applied within a particular uh, community. So and these are just some examples of the, the items that are on there. We also have common department goals and practices. We really encourage this. Um, an example, but the goals that we're putting in place are ones that let us all march in the same direction, but enable the liaisons to apply it directly to the needs of their communities. So increasing the community's awareness of their librarian. Um, a liaison could choose to do that in any number of ways based on how they already have relationships set up. Or a self-review of their liaison program and choosing something to learn. Um, if one community um, has a lot of uh, research data needs, they could choose to develop their skill set in that area. Whereas another one um, is uh, has a lot of need to understand um, licensing and copyright information for the needs of another um, or video services or something where they are seeing their communities asking a, question, a lot of questions around that, they can do that. We have, um, we're putting in place practices in common, such as contacting all new faculty and providing the tools and templates to enable people to do that without having to reinvent it uh, uniquely for themselves. And I, that's a common theme for what we're doing, to not forced liaisons to recreate things from scratch for themselves, and it saves them t a lot of time when we do that. The other thing we do is we provide a lot of forums for li uh, librarians to get together and um, talk about stuff. And um, this is a picture from one of our staff meetings. We try to have some time in our staff meetings to talk amongst ourselves and work on some question that one at least one of us is wrestling with. Um, we also have communities of practice where it's smaller groups of liaisons that get together who deal with um, their communities who have common information practices, I would say. So science and engineering, arts and humanities, or um, social science and management. We also have multidisciplinary groups that cross those communities because of the research the nature of research at MIT, uh, where they they talk about common needs across departments when they're focused on a particular kind of topic or like transportation or um, energy or whatever. So we also um, provide money. So when a, for outreach and relationship building activities. So. If a research community wants to talk about a certain book as it applies to their research and teaching agenda, uh, we'll help fund the acquisition of those books um, or any number of things. If we feel it would be great to have lunch with a researcher, we'll 
handle that. It, anything that the liaison feels will support their creation of relationships in their department. We have a very low barrier. They go do it. And we have sufficient money to support that. So this next slide um, is actually probably where um, what we're doing overlaps very significantly with what Kurt um, uh, has, has talked about in that we the liaisons are focused on the communities as they're arranged at MIT. But we are also developing pockets of expertise um, to provide services in very targeted areas. And what we hope to do is enable uh, the liaison librarians to match up with these services that we're providing um, throughout the libraries to support them. So the top piece represents research data management services. We have some liaisons that are, or some librarians who focus on that. Uh, the video services, we have a whole staff on production, um, access, conferencing, all kinds of video services, GIS services, scholarly publishing and licensing. Uh, images, any number of specialized services that cross needs, uh, that cross the institute um, uh, in terms of need. Uh, two other groups that we have that are more internally focused but support liaisons in a centralized way is one is around collection strategy and management, uh, where we are really deliberately trying to reduce the um, selection um, needs and time required for our liaison librarians. They are all selectors, pretty much. And we are working towards reducing the time on item by item selection and supporting more collective approaches to um, that part of our work. We also have instruction and reference um, services that help um, set policy and practice and train on different skills related to um, instruction in particular and, and looking at our reference services very strategically. Um, we know now that more than half of reference inquiries come directly to our liaisons versus through a service point and a lot of what comes through the service point our access services staff handle quite well. So I think we've moved in a good direction and they're really supporting us in that continuing transition. Another thing we do collectively is uh, working to understand user needs. Uh, we have a department within the library's uh, user experience group that deliberately sets up studies so that we can continue to learn about our um, the MIT community and how they're using and needing information. Uh, last year they did a study, uh, they called it the Digital Scholarship Study. It was an ethnographic probe where they um, had students uh, study their technology use related to information and report back after a week. We have an assessment team that administers our survey um, that gets us data uh, in, uh, from our communities down to the department level. And the multidisciplinary groups are also studying our, these communities in different ways um, that we have not had a chance to do before. So, but once you have, so not only do we have these central ways, but the liaisons themselves are an amazing channel of understanding user needs. They have those individual relationships with researchers and need a place to take it. So we're working on creating pathways for advocacy uh, for those sorts of needs. Uh, we've tried a few things. Um, not all of them work, but uh, generally uh, what does work is enabling a liaison to write up the need and get it seen by other people who could do something about it. So examples include um, uh, proposing f uh, funding for uh, resources that may not fit our traditional profile, such as a, a chem bio draw, a tool to uh, enable um, drawing chemical structures that can be used for searching and whatever. Or changes in policy. If we find that our researchers are just really frustrated by um, policy, they they have the ability to voice that. Or um, we've seen in the past year. Uh, spate of needs around content management and self-archiving within departments. And so we wrote a white paper about that, just kind of summarizing all those needs we were seeing to raise up to the appropriate people in the organization. Okay, so that that's a lot of uh, universal support for liaisons, and I would say they're they're feeling really good about it. I have a very high morale in my, my group, which is great. Um, and But there's this question of hiring, and I haven't had a chance to do much yet, um, so I've been working with existing staff. But I would say that, and there's this question about domain knowledge, and, um, and I would say probably 
it's probably 60, 40, 60% of my liaisons have some sort of domain expertise based on educational background and the other 40% do not. And I would say the success of their, their ability to interact with researchers is not dependent necessarily on that domain knowledge. Um, it's nice to have, and in certain disciplines, I would say it's uh, it's really useful for establishing relationships, but I wouldn't call it universally so. So I think we've developed a very um, flexible approach. I think on every job ad, we are planning to at least advertise domain knowledge as a highly desirable um, skill set, but perhaps not a um, required skill set. And I, I think that uh, we find that our librarians acquire knowledge as uh, from David Shoemaker's and Mary Talley's report through that continuous learning and um, through working with a community. And I think if they have curiosity, a fearlessness, and um, enthusiasm for the work of their communities, it goes a long way, as well as very strong sense that their that the services they provide are of high value to those researchers, that confidence that um, uh, only that we have particular expertise uh, that researchers need. So um, what else does it take? Uh, it takes, within the library system, uh, the right mix of services and uh, the ability to evolve those services to meet the needs that we find out, and um, explicitly changed rules. As we've reorganized our staff, we changed position descriptions to both explicitly emphasize the outreach and rela relationship building, and also um, we changed the collections focus from the acquisition mode to the stewardship of MIT authored materials, which inserts people into the publication cycle of the communities. Um, so we look for opportunities to do that, to match what we expect uh, liaison librarians to do to the what we're trying to match up service-wise. So some challenges we have. Um, this library reputation among faculty and students is an issue, um, and I think the new stories to tell, as Scott Walter mentioned, is very important that we continue to evolve our story that we're telling. Um, We've explicitly designed a model where we have liaisons and we have expert, deep experts in other areas, other kinds of services, because it is difficult for liaisons to know everything um, about what their researchers might need in order to respond to the opportunity of the moment. And um, there's nothing worse than putting a liaison in front of a community when some service that we provide does not actually uh, work very well for them. Uh, so it's important for the library system as a whole to be able to grow and change in response to those user needs. And of course, time is always, like with this presentation, always a challenge. <laughs> and um, in a, I have a frequent conversation with my, my staff about, don't worry, there are always going to be more opportunities than you have time to respond to, and that's okay. That's a great thing, actually. So how do we know we're making a difference? I have just two pages of some examples of how um, my liaisons are interacting uh, with their communities. And um, you'll see it's a mix of teaching, research, and administrative support. And I would say that by engaging in all those areas um, with a lot of emphasis, that they lead to other opportunities in the other aspects of our work. Um, so here's just one page of examples, another um, set, uh, and it ranges all over the place. And these these do not require permission from anybody to do. The liaisons see the opportunity and they, they run with it. Okay, so other ways we, we are trying to see if we have an impact, and I would say this is an incomplete story. It's just some beginning ideas on this. We can show that if um, a librarian visits a class, that uh, the awareness of library services and use of library services increases by quite a bit. We can show that faculty are um, increasingly aware of our open, the open access, their open access policy, really, um, and we continue to try to address that and support that. We can show that um, within this chemistry class, 3091, it's a freshman level requirement. We can show that there, over a period of years, there have been statistically significant gains in 15 out of 18 skills that we were trying to address. 
And as we contact new faculty or new department heads, um, we know that we've contacted them all. We know how many times we're meeting with them face to face. We know how many times they, they reach out and contact us back again, uh, within their first year and how aware they are of their librarian versus, um, the rest of the faculty overall. So we're, we're trying to get a handle on what ways to see uh, what the relationships are, uh, but we and their impact. But we, I would say, we haven't yet figured out how to measure the impact on the research piece of it. So I'm eager to learn from all of my colleagues here. Okay, that's it for me. And 